Hey everybody, Jeff Kibbe over at Metastock Hope You're Doing Well. Thanks for watching the video today. It's good to see you. Uh, appreciate it. If you're watching us on YouTube right now uh, or in the future, uh, make sure to like and subscribe. It helps a great deal. Right now we're trying to get the subscriber count up to 78,000. We're almost there. So uh, go ahead and like and subscribe if you haven't already. Anyway, uh, my name is Jeff Kibbe. I'm just going to be kicking things off. That means I read a legal disclaimer. I talk about um, our presenter who's going to do a great job today and uh, get out of the way. So let's get that going. So today's demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and the accompanying software plugins. It is not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock should have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. I also want to remind you that we're not going to be uh, promoting any securities today. We're not paid to provide any securities. We're not going to recommend that you buy any securities. Nothing that we do in the demonstration today should be construed as us recommending that you buy a security. So with all that being said, I hope our lawyers are happy. So in any case, our presenter today is Alex Cole. Alex has been a partner in Metastock for a number of years. Um, I'm going to say a few things about him. Very, very good system designer. Um, I really like kind of the go-no-go -no -go systems that he kind of helped put together and put into Metastock. I really uh, like kind of the design, the way that it looks at different elements like trend, consolidations, momentums to kind of give you a real well, well <laughs> a really well-rounded view of the markets. And the other thing that I really like is his kind of sense of design is he shows you the charts. I really think the charts that he's put together look really, really good, uh, both in terms of the way that the, the signals are presented, the colors in which they're presented, the design of them. They're just aesthetically pleasing and they work well. So with that being said, Alex, let's go ahead and get you started. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, thank you, sir. Um, All right. There I am. I can see you. Okay. <laughs> good things. Uh, I can hear you too. Let me let me go ahead and send this screen share over to you. Good, Is good, there good. Anything right. you add? I didn't yeah. Uh, uh, I know that you play guitar. Uh, <laughs> I know you have a great a better beard than I ever do. Um, but those didn't really feel like they've worked well in the introduction. So <laughs> Well, mine's mine's uh, mine's losing a lot of its color, which is which is you know a little worrying, but there <laughs> you're you go. catching up. <laughs> All right, here. Uh, let's see. I, I, I you should be able to share screen. I can see it. Uh, Alex, thanks for joining us for uh, for a little bit today. Uh, I'm gonna get out of the way. It's your turn. Okay. Um, thanks so much, Jeff. Um, it has been a little while, and it's good to be back with you guys. Um, and I'm excited to be here. Today, we're going to talk about just trading with the trend. And we're going to use the go no go charts that are built into Metastock. Uh, the implementation with, that we've done in Metastock is really, really a good one. And thank you, Jeff, and the team for that. Um, there's going to be a lot of Metastock specific functionality and features that we're going to show as well at the end. Uh, Jeff and I will talk through some of that. The most important thing that we can do is stay in a trend. Uh, for as long as possible and maximize those gains. So um, what we like to say, this is one of my favorite quotes, and this is that if you take emotion, the would be, could be, should be out of it and look at what is and quantify it, then you can have a big advantage over most human beings. Now, what do we mean by quantify? <clears throat> We're not really talking here about mathematics necessarily or coding, but we're talking about understanding and sort of classifying the market that we're in so that we can then make intelligent decisions based on what the market is giving us. And this is a quote from John Henry, if you're familiar with um, the, the, the movie Moneyball. Um, John Henry bought the Liverpool Football Club, the Boston Red Sox, and he brought an analytics to baseball in a way that allowed him to quantify what is happening. You could be looking at a pitcher and thinking, oh, yeah, he, he has a great arm and and that looks, I mean, me talking about baseball being British, but you know where I'm going with this. You can you can get a sense of something, but if you can actually quantify it and put um, a value to it, then you can have a much clearer picture and perhaps that can aid in your analysis and your decision making. So 
We love this idea of taking emotions out of our technical analysis and our technical research. So let's talk a little bit about why that's so powerful. We know from um, human behavioral studies that it is more painful for us to lock in losses than it is happy for us to take gains. Um, so what we end up doing is locking in profits too soon and letting our losses run, which is the exact opposite of what we want to do. Because it's so painful to take a loss, we let it run hoping that it comes back, right? So those trades then become investments um, and we wait and hope that it'll come back. And of course, we know that when that happens, you can, you can, a trade can go uh, the wrong way against you for some time. And it's because of that pain that we associate with losing. We don't love our losses, which is what we should do. It's the opposite of what we want to do when we're trading. So if we look at this image here on the right, uh, what we're seeing is a break-even frontier. And what we need to know and understand as technicians is that we don't have to be right all the time. We can admit when we're wrong and we can take losses as long as we don't let them get out of control. So we need to follow the rules that we set for ourselves to remove the subjectivity. So you can see from this image that even if we're only right 50% of the time, as long as we're letting our winners run more than we're letting our losers kill us, then we're going to be profitable over time. Now, we've talked about people in previous presentations, Paul Tudor Jones and others, great trend followers who are okay being right 30% of the time because when they're right, their gains far outpace their losses. So you need to be able to stay with the trends that are working. And we're gonna talk about some of the technical tools that allow us to do that so that we can minimize risk, get out of the trades that aren't working and stay with the trades that are working to put the, um, <clears throat> the sort of the weight of the odds of being profitable on our side. All right, so given then that we want technical analysis to help us understand what we're looking at, so that we can make an informed decision, how many times have we all ended up building charts um, that perhaps look like this or worse, where you have multiple indicators on your price panel, multiple panels below price, and you end up then with a chart that is hard to read and hard to understand. So you want the information that goes with some of these fantastic uh, technical indicators. We've all done the work, we've studied it, we've done the research. We know that there's great value in some of the fantastic tools that have come from um, the, the pioneers in our industry. So we want the information so that we can quantify this situation, so that we can know with some confidence that we're in a trend, so that we can know perhaps when the trend is reversing with some confidence. We want this information, but now we become victims of a overcomplication and we can't see the forest for the trees so to speak so it's hard to see price levels it's hard to see important uh, levels of support and resistance it's hard to find those market dynamics playing out on the chart because we've made our chart so complicated so we think that this is a problem and I, when i was working uh, in all different areas within the industry we see this problem um, in several different ways. New people to technical analysis learn a lot, get fascinated by it, but then overwhelm their charts and make it hard for themselves to follow and understand their analysis, and they become sort of powerless to make decisions. Analysis paralysis is a real problem. But then for professionals in the industry, working with people in sell-side research, they go through a very, very strong process of identifying uh, situations for stocks, but then it becomes difficult to explain to the buy side because of the wealth of information that's on here. And even if they're fairly confident of a time that they might become sort of long on a security, it becomes difficult to explain because of the nature of the chart that they've built. So from all different angles within the industry, we see the complication of technical charts um, as a problem. And, and, you know, sometimes we get caught up in the idea of, well, if one indicator is good, then and a better. And that's not always the case. We want the information, but we want to keep our charts simple. So let's talk quickly about how you would come up with a system um, of identifying trend that is based on sound technical analysis that gives you that full 
information that we need that allows you to become confident in your decision making. And then we'll address how to deal with the complication that we've brought to the chart after that. So we can be looking at a chart and right at the beginning, we need to know that trend identification can be arguably the most important thing we can understand when we're looking at charts. Now, the reason for that is if we can identify a, a trend in price action, then we can trade in that direction and profit from that move. Uh, we don't want to be trading against a strong trend. We don't want to be um, unsure of what the market is telling us about the direction of price movements. Now, we like to uh, argue that it's simple, but not easy. Very uh, conceptually simple, but not easy to execute. So what we're going to do is step through this system of trend identification. So hopefully we can take something out of this in terms of just understanding what goes into uh, un, you know, a, a getting a sense of trend direction. So the first thing we might do is just eyeball the chart and look to see whether we're seeing any discernible direction. Are we going from bottom left to top right? Now, of course, looking at a chart like this, it's easy to see that, yes, this was a trend. But at what point do we become uh, convinced that a trend has become evident? Uh, we know that a trend is a series of higher highs and higher lows. So we start to see towards the left side of the chart, we start to see a new highs. We start to see higher lows. And so at some point here, we're going to wonder if we're seeing the beginnings of a new upward trend. But we're going to want to automate that to remove the subjectivity that I was talking about a little while ago. And one of the tools we could use is Donchian channels. Donchian channels takes a look back period and tries to answer the question of whether or not the current high price is the high for that look back period. And if it is, then the red line will move higher. Uh, same thing for the lows. If the current price is the high, the low of the look back period, then that's where the green line will be. So you can see now that we have an automated way of identifying higher highs and higher lows. You can see that those the red line is moving higher, the green line is moving higher. So again, about a third, quarter to a third of the way through this chart, you can identify new highs and new new higher highs and new higher lows in this security using Donchian channels. And as an aside, if you're not familiar with the turtle trader story, uh, look that up, an amazing story about uh, great trader Richard Dennis who tried to grow traders, as he said, uh, by teaching them how to trade. This was one of their main entry points was using Donchian channels to find breakouts. So you might use Donchian channels. Now, from there, we may progress to something uh, perhaps a little bit more sophisticated, like the Bollinger Bands. John Bollinger created bands that encapsulate price using standard deviations. So what that means is that when you put the Bollinger Bands on the chart, based on the average of price, those bands are two standard deviations above and below that mean. And we know from previous long time ago math classes that two standard deviations should encompass about 95% of a normally distributed data set. Of course, financial data is not normally distributed, but the vast majority of trading data should fall within those bands. Why is that important? Well, when the price breaks out of a band, when price trades outside of those bands, then it's clearly a significant moment. And so when bands are narrow, one of the ways that John Bollinger teaches us to use these is that when the bands are narrow and price breaks out, then we should perhaps look to trade in the direction of the break because after that reduced volatility of a narrow band, a breakout outside of a band is significant and we should look at uh, perhaps price moving in that direction. That gives us more of a sense of trend identification when the in this case now we're looking at a new high in Donchian channels we're also looking at price trading to the very top and out of a Bollinger Band. Everybody here has got I'm sure got moving averages on their chart. Uh, when we were working sort of in the industry we didn't even consider moving averages as um, technical analysis that's how prevalent they were on people's charts. Moving averages, though, can really be uh, incredibly valuable, and that's why they've been around for so long, because if price is trading above an average, then we know that right now price is trading higher than it has in the past, right? So that's inherently bullish. 
And of course, if you've got one moving average, you can throw another one on there. Uh, more is always better, right? Um, and so we can look at the crosses then, the interaction between those moving averages. If the short-term moving averages is crossing above the long-term, then we know that prices in the shorter term are moving higher, faster than prices over the longer term average. So again, a bullish indication. So now we've got that same area of the chart right around March there, and we're seeing that we've got new highs. We've got price moving to the top of those Bollinger Bands. We've got price above its moving average. We've got a moving average cross. And so things are starting to shape up for us to, to make that decision that perhaps we are identifying a new trend. Going all the way back to Charles Dow, we'll talk about Charles Dow in a little bit as well, but volume is something that a lot of people will have on their chart as well. And it's really the first of the confirmatory tools that we have in technical analysis. It's not based on price information, but it can give us a sense of market participation. So how much is the market participating in the movements that we're seeing in price? And so if we see price breaking out, we would probably want to see healthy volume. Uh, volume confirming that move. If we saw lower than normal volume on a price break higher, then perhaps that might be a concern. Maybe that move is thinly represented by the market and not quite as telling. So we probably want to put volume on our chart as well. And let's add one more because we haven't put anything in the lower panel yet. MACD, a very, very commonly used and very well, uh, well liked indicator, is the moving average convergence and divergence indicator. And what that does is takes a look at two moving averages, but this time exponential, so adjust more quickly to changing prices. And it looks at the difference between those moving averages. That's what the MACD is, the difference between those two moving averages. And so that's a bit more of an oscillator now, gives us a sense of trend and momentum. And we might want to look for moments when the MACD is above the zero line, right? That means that we've got positive difference between those two moving averages. We might look at the signal where we, we cross over the signal. Perhaps we look at that as a sense of um, something bullish. So multiple things we can draw from MACD. But again, at this point, somewhere between February and March in the chart, we are feeling fairly confident um, that we have identified a new trend. The problem with that, I'm sure you'll agree, as we brought that problem slide up at the beginning, is that it starts to become complicated. And that process that I walked you through is a really simple example of what somebody might do. Um, we've worked with so many technicians, great technicians with amazing technical process, that it's far more complicated than that. You may have more panels below your chart. You may have more uh, indicators on the price panel. So you become a uh, victim to that complication again. So what we wanted to do, go to go charts, one of the, the, uh, the, hopefully the solutions that we find is to take all of that information, that information and more that we were just looking at, and behind the scenes, calculate what that means from a technical perspective. So we look at the concepts, the foundational concepts of technical analysis. We look at some of the most used indicators, and we ask ourselves, are certain criteria being met that allow me to identify trend? And then based on what we can come out of that uh, blending of indicators, that calculation behind the scenes, we can paint the price bar based on strength of trend. And so hopefully what you'll see is that we can now understand the trend based on just the price bars themselves and leave price as the focus. Um, and so, what we've got on Metastock is that go, no, go trend indicator uh, for free that you can add by applying the template. And so when you apply the template, it sets up the Metastock chart um, in the way that we created it with the black background and the colors. Uh, we're going to go through the colors again now in a second, um, but it's out there and, and use it. And really, we just would love to hear feedback. Um, we get feedback on, on the go, no, go concept. And so we love to keep getting it because that makes us um, makes us confident that we're moving uh, in the right direction. And so we'll try to bring more of the go no go concepts uh, to to users. So please, if you haven't already, try it, start using it, and then just let us know. Let uh, Jeff and the guys at Metastock know, or let us know at info at go no go charts dot com. Send us an email and let us know what you think about it. But 
For the rest of today's presentation, what we're going to do is go through the rest of the Go No Go suite of tools that really complement the trend to give us the full technical picture. Um, and Jeff mentioned it at the outset that what we're trying to do is, is to understand everything technically about a security in the simplest and most easy to read chart so that we can aid our decision making, not complicate it. So let's go now and talk about why we want to do that without uh, taking our eyes off price. Um, now, I said I love the quote at the beginning. I, I'm, I think I might love this one more, right? This is that ultimately it is the dollar weighted collective opinion of all market participants that determines whether a stock goes up or down. And that consensus is revealed by analyzing price. So we're not trying to say as technical analysts that fundamentals aren't driving price movements. We're not trying to say that you know a three year uptrend in a security isn't driven by fundamental outperformance. But what we do know is that it is the market participants, the people buying and selling the security that move that price based on what's happening underneath the, uh, the market. So, you know, you could be a, a research analyst and you could understand what is happening fundamentally about a company. And you may therefore uh, have an opinion on where, where that trend is going to go. Well, it is the trading that then collectively decides where the, where the price ends at the end of the day. And price is, is not an estimate, it's, it's a fact, it's not restated. And that price then is on our chart and we know what the market believed was a fair price for that stock. And it could be baking in uh, future uh, earnings information. It could be looking at uh, past data that we already know. It could be looking at what's happening in, in, in um, macro, factors that might affect the industry that that security is in. So everything that is affecting possibly in the future or in the past or right now is going to be um, revealed in price. Uh, so what market participants think is going to be revealed in price. Now, that can be out of step with fundamentals for some time, and that's where the power of technical analysis comes in. Um, so I love this quote. Uh, really think about what it means and how that can affect the way you think of, of security analysis, but um, that consensus of market belief is revealed by looking at price charts. And that's where we are then as technicians. So let's go through a couple of charts and let's consider the trend that we see on the chart. If you've seen our presentations before, if you've seen a go-no-go -no -go chart, you'll be familiar with this, but we have five colors that determine the trend and the strength. The blue bar, the strong bright blue bar tells us that we're in our strongest bullish environment. The aqua bar tells us that we're in a weaker bullish environment. Pink tells us we're in a weaker bearish environment. And purple tells us that we're in a strong bearish environment. And the amber bar tells us that there are not enough criteria being met in the background by the go-no-go -no -go, uh, calculations to determine a trend in either direction. And so we're going to paint those bars amber. And those are our bars of uncertainty. Those often come between trends as transitionary bars. They often come in choppy markets, but we call them go fish bars. So we've got go, no go, and go fish. I'm sure you may well have heard me talk about the Jesse Livermore quote about how there's a time to go long, a time to go short, and a time to go fishing. So when the market isn't giving us enough to tell us what the trend is, then we paint those go fish bars amber. So let's take a look at the uh, the SPY, the <clears throat> the ETF for the S&P. Now, some of these charts, uh, the first part of this presentation I pulled yesterday, I did pull a couple of charts this morning so we can see what happened today. Um, where where are we? It's very, there's nothing really to do but just call it out. And the trend in the SPY is a strong go, right? We know that because the criteria for the go no go concepts are um, being met at a level that tells us to paint the bar bright blue. So we are in strong go conditions 
on the S&P for a daily chart. And you can see how the trend, the colors roll through the trends. You can see how we went in from go colors, blue and aqua, into no-go colors, pink and purple. We saw some amber go fish bars there as prices tried to rally out of the no-go, but then rolled over again. And then we transitioned back into a go trend and uh, we see the go colors again now um, for quite a few months. Now, what I want to draw your eye to here on this chart is that we do have areas of weakness. And that's one thing that was really crucial to building into this was we wanted to identify weakening trend conditions because those are often either opportunities to buy, uh, think about the concept or the idea of buying the dip, or those could be precursors to trend reversal. So when you see those aqua bars, those are usually on a counter trend correction. When you see pink bars, those are usually on a counter trend correction in a no-go. But where are we right now? S&P daily strong go. Um, we also want to make sure that we're conscious of multi time frame analysis. This is one of the greatest concepts brought to us by Charles Dow. Um, now, he was a, uh, a nautical man. He used to talk about the three trends that he observed in the markets. The primary trend is that major movement over multiple years. These could be the fundamental drivers or the economic drivers that really move markets and that trend is the strongest that trend is is like the tides in the ocean um, these are sort of cycles bullish regimes you know where we're going to have a series of years where markets will move in a certain direction now that trend you want to be trading in the direction of that trend right and then there's the secondary trend that he would talk about being more like the waves of the ocean and these are the cyclical corrections within the larger primary trend. And so you can see that if you were able to uh, trade basing your perhaps your decisions on the secondary trend, you may be able to trade around the primary movements that we're seeing in the markets. And then, of course, the minor trend are those daily fluctuations. Um, now, he used to say that these are very difficult to, to operate in. These are the minor fluctuations that are just really noise. Um, and very, very, very choppy. Now, what we know now as technical analysts is that these time frames can be adjusted based on your risk horizon and your trading style. So technical analysis is fractal, meaning that the same application of tools or the same discipline process should work on a weekly chart, and it could work also on a five-minute chart if you're looking at trading, let's say, uh, the e-mini futures. So but the concept of having a larger time frame bias helps you trade in the direction of that trend, whatever that primary trend is for you in technical analysis. Now, so let's go through the S&P. We saw the daily chart was in a strong go. Where are we on the weekly chart for the SPY? Also in a strong go. We can see how there was a real moment of weakness in 2023 into, into Q4, where we even painted an amber bar of uncertainty. But now we've exploded back to new highs, all-time highs, with a series of consecutive bright blue bars, most of which closing at higher closes as well. So this week, a little bit of a pullback, but we are in strong go bars on the weekly chart. So let's think about what that might mean and how that might help determine our trading. Let's imagine that you're a trader working for a PM and you are being advised to take a position. You can then drop down another time frame to perhaps get a sensible entry price or a good entry point, right? So we know that the large time frame trend is a go. We also know that the daily time frame is a go. So if we drop down to let's say a 30 minute chart, we may only be looking for go entries or go trades based on the fact that our bias is a go on the larger time frames. So we wouldn't want to be taking no go um, trades or decisions because that would be against the direction of the trend. We talked about that at the beginning. We want to trade in the direction of the, the underlying trend. So dropping down to a 30-minute chart, you can see how we would be looking for those go movements. You can see the trends there, the go trends, uh, and those periods of correction that are against the go trend. So you have, would have had you know, three trades, let's say, if you were trading in the direction of your larger time frames. What else do we want to do as trend followers? Well, we want to understand uh, intermarket analysis. 
And, and that's very, very important and even more important now because even if you are just trading equities, the ability to look at ETFs and the ability to sort of understand what the macro factors are that might affect equities is as easy as it's ever been. And of course, John Murphy, uh, when I started working in um, finance a while ago, I'll say, um, that was the Bible. That that was what was considered the Bible of technical analysis. John Mar John Murphy's technical analysis book. Well, he wrote also another one on intermarket analysis that's considered the standard. And then, of course, there's people like Marcus Katsanos that have built on that work. And it really helps you then to. There's a couple of sayings: "Fish where the fish are." Some people say, "Fish where the fishermen are." Even better. And so, understanding the asset class trends helps you. Um, those macro factors help you really look for opportunities in areas that make sense based on <clears throat> what's happening around the asset classes. So with, <clears throat> with meta stock and with the go-no-go -no -go trend, you can quickly get a sense, you can build a multiple layout view and you can get a sense of where the trends are. Um, some people might get sick of my comment, but the, the song, how it's five o'clock somewhere, the, the Jimmy Buffett song will, I like to say that there's a trend somewhere and even if it's not in equities, there, there'll be a trend somewhere. And, and when we talk to some of the greatest trend followers out there, when we listen to people uh, speak at conferences, you know, people like Jerry Parker talk about, <clears throat> hey, if equities are struggling, you know, he's not, he's not worried because he might be making money in corn. Um, you know, there is a trend out there. And as equity follow trend followers, we need to be open to the idea of diversifying across asset classes so that we can capture the trends wherever they are. So you can quickly get a sense of <clears throat> what's happening around the asset classes by looking at uh, go, no, go trend because the colors are right there and they'll pop out at you. And you can go sort of around the around the wheel here and see that equities are in a strong go. U.S. Treasuries are in a strong no-go. Of course, Treasuries operate inversely to rates, so we know what that means. Uh, U.S. Oil in a strong go. Uh, that's been moving higher for the last couple of months, set a, a higher high and a higher low. Bitcoin it was in an amazing move through 2023, then corrected against that trend and now back in a, in a strong go and, and moving higher. Gold in a strong no-go now. Gold has been really hard for people, so much chop. You can see all those amber bars there as price moved sideways since the last high. And now we are in a no-go painting purple bars. Uh, and the U.S. dollar, having had that really deep correction um, highlighted by those purple and pink bars, now back in a go trend, making a series of higher highs and higher lows. So technical and the beauty of technical analysis is that you can have a competent conversation very quickly, you know, a couple of minutes. And I can you can talk to a, an economist about how the how we're seeing rising rates again, how we're seeing uh, equity markets are strong, um, but we're concerned about gold moving lower again. Oil markets are moving higher, as is the dollar. But what does the strength of the dollar potentially mean for the future of equities? And you can have this understanding based on a very quick look at a chart, especially when that chart is not complicated and we can get a sense of the trends using the go-no-go -no -go trend. Okay, so that was going to go trend. We're going to move now for the next 20 minutes and talk about the full suite of tools. Um, we're going to talk about how it can complement our understanding of trend and how it allows us to stay with the trend um, by going through everything else that is on the go-no-go -no -go chart. Now, you know that I just spent 30 minutes talking about how we want to keep it simple. What we are doing with the full suite of tools is putting a complete understanding of the technical analysis in the price panel and one oscillator panel below. And so hopefully you'll see that even though we have all of the information we need, by the end of this, we still have a fairly simple chart that is, um, is easy to understand. So we talked about the trend. We know what that does for us. We blend those foundational concepts of trend following to color code the price chart. Let's now talk a little bit about the go and go oscillator, which does the same thing, but for momentum. We'll talk about what that means. We'll talk about the third and fourth pieces of the full suite of tools, go no go icons and the go no go squeeze. So momentum, really quickly, this is how I like to teach momentum when I do um, prep courses for CMT or, or teach new people in the industry. I talk about cars. I'm from the UK, car crazy over there, World Rally Championships, Formula One, you know, we're all talking about 
cars and we're all driving cars all the time. These are clearly not British cars, but the idea is the same. What does momentum do? It measures the rate of change of price. So I like to talk about it in terms of acceleration. And that helps us understand the strength of any price move. So if you think about a car, maybe not a race car, just your own car, but you're, let's say you're pulling onto a highway using the on-ramp, you're going to uh, accelerate pretty quickly to try to get up to that highway speed. So at the beginning of your, acceler- your, your entry onto the highway, you might go from 10 miles an hour to 20 miles an hour to 30 to 40 with the same rate of speed increase, right? Your acceleration is 10 miles an hour every minute, let's say, or every 10 seconds, and you're increasing your car's speed at the same rate. But then as you get closer to the highway speed, you will probably increase your speed more slowly, 45 to 48 to 50, as you hit the the speed limit, which around here on a lot of our New Jersey highways are 50 miles an hour, and then you pull on to the highway. If you kept increasing your speed 10 miles an hour every 10 seconds, then you'd be going over the speed limit way too quickly, you'd probably get pulled over. So your car is still getting faster, but it's getting faster more slowly. And that's the important thing to note. That's how we like to think about price momentum. Price is still going higher, but it's not going as high as rapidly. And so we can see that momentum can decrease even as price moves higher. Price moves more slowly higher, so momentum can come down. And so what's likely going to happen, if you think back to the car example, you're pulling onto the highway, you're not going to go faster than 50 miles an hour unless you want to risk getting a ticket. So you've topped out, right? Like a market top, you might not go any faster. And even more likely, eventually, you're going to pull off the highway and slow down. So if we can see that momentum decrease, that can be an early warning that perhaps the, uh, the increase in price may not continue. So we won't spend long on this, but we can do the same thing then, right? We can go through our price chart and just as we did to trend following, we can build a really sensible process for understanding the momentum on any chart. And um, what you'll quickly see is now we've got four or five panels. We add that to the chart that we had at the beginning. And now we're really overwhelming ourselves and leaving us a little bit unable to process our decisions. Um, But we want the information that's in these momentum oscillators. And what kind of information are we looking for? We're looking for extreme price swings. We're looking for divergence between price and momentum. We're looking to be able to use momentum information in a trend. Um, And so we'll talk about how we can do that with the go-no-go oscillator. So we take the same approach now to the oscillators we did with the trend indicator. We blend all of the foundational, most used indicators in momentum analysis together to just use one oscillator that gives us what we need. So think about RSI, right? We want that information. We want to know if RSI is overbought. We want to know if it's in neutral territory. Maybe we want to use a faster RSI, faster than the default of 14. So we take these concepts and we blend them together and we create the go-no-go oscillator. Now you can still do traditional technical analysis here. You can look for extremes of overbought and oversold. Um, You can see that on the chart, when there is a peak in the oscillator, there is a peak in price. You can see that over on the left uh, uh, at the end of last year or at the end of the year before this chart, peak in price, peak in the oscillator. You can see where there's a low in the oscillator in February, there's a low in the price. And so you can find those extreme swings of overbought and oversold that may lead to corrections against the trend. We can also identify divergence easily. You can see that we have higher highs in price and lower highs in the oscillator, and that often can lead to a steeper correction than we get just with the the extreme swing into overbought or oversold territory. And then later in the chart, you can see lower lows in price, higher lows in the oscillator, indicating that there is less momentum, less enthusiasm on that low than there was before. So divergence, very, very important concept, easy to see using the go-no-go oscillator. And of course, we also wanted to get a sense of volume. We talked about volume in that initial build of a checklist when we were identifying trend. And so we've incorporated volume into the Metastock implementation by having a, a ribbon along the bottom that turns to a 
dark blue when volume is heavier than its average. So if we're seeing a higher high in price on heavy volume, that's confirming what we're seeing in price uh, and vice versa. So that's the go no go oscillator and how we can use it in the traditional sense to give us all the momentum information we need without needing multiple panels. But what really sets it apart, um, we hope and we find, is that we have an objective line in our panel that is at zero that allows us to use the oscillator when prices are trending. So there's been a lot of research done about the value of using momentum oscillators to, in trend. Uh, Connie Brown wrote some really good um, educational material on that concept. And what we find is that when a price is trending, the oscillator will range. Uh, it will go, let's say, if a price is trending up, it will go overbought and it will come back to neutral. It will go overbought, it will come back to neutral. And that makes sense because we don't expect price to go oversold in a healthy uptrend. Why would we see excessive selling in a healthy uptrend? So we, what we would expect from an oscillator is for it to be overbought, really enthusiastic buying, and then some neutral momentum as people digest those gains and price cools off before going again if that trend is healthy. Now, the problem we have with that is that when we look at momentum oscillators, they move very, very quickly, and we have uh, tried to find ranges for RSI. Again, I'll use RSI because it's so commonly used. But the RSI ranges, people would try to look between 40 and 80. Maybe that's what the range is of RSI when a price security is trending. Well, that reintroduces subjectivity and complication because what happens if the oscillator comes down to 39? Does that count as a break of 40? Is that okay because it's close to 40? What are we really going to make our decision based on um, when price when the oscillator is moving very, very fast. Some people say they like to change those ranges for different asset classes. I've worked with FX traders who use ranges of 35 and 75 um, for, for RSI. And so we become victims again of that sort of inability to decide what we should do uh, when we're facing some subjectivity. So what we did was we calculated the go -no go oscillator in a way that causes the indicator to fall or rise to zero when every input to the blended oscillator, right, all of those inputs to um, our go -no go oscillator are in their respective neutral territories. So think RSI between 30 and 70. You know, you might think about stochastics between 20 and 80. When those inputs are in neutral territory, the go -no go oscillator falls to zero. So now we know that we have that objective level. Anything below zero, and we're getting some kind of overselling, uh, some kind of oversold reading from one of the inputs. So when we are in a trend, we can then look for the oscillator to find support at zero if it's a go trend or resistance at zero if it's a no-go trend. And that is so valuable because that allows us to stay with the trend. Think back to one of those early slides about the expectancy formula. We need the winners to outpace our losers. So if we're wondering at any time, when should I get out of this go trend? Well, we can look to the zero line. And as long as that zero line holds as support, we can remain in that trend. Some people will use those opportunities to scale up, to pyramid into positions. If we look, think back to the, you know, the, the increase in trading during the pandemic, people that were just like, buy the dip, buy the dip. Well, when is that sensible? When do you buy the dip? How do you know that it's a buy the dip moment, not a reversal? As long as the momentum oscillator stays at or above zero, we know that momentum is in line with the underlying trend if it's a go trend and the reverse for a no-go. So that's super important. Um, so what's next for, for uh, technical analysis? Well, when we approach the go no-go chart, we want to uh, direct our eyes Two important situations. We want, like I said, all of the information, but we want ease of understanding. And being a big believer in data visualization, I wanted to highlight certain situations on the price chart. And this is based on the interaction between the trend and the oscillator. So the first kind of icon that you're going to see on here, highlight the return of momentum in the direction of the trend. That's what we just talked about with the go and go oscillator in the zero line. If a trend is in place, 
and the oscillator finds support at zero, we're going to say that that is likely to lead to trend continuation because we are seeing resurgent momentum in the direction of the underlying go trend. Now, if this was a no-go, we'd be looking at resistance from below the zero line. And if it continued to find resistance at zero, we'd see no-go trend continuation. So this is like any technical analysis, this can work for uptrends and downtrends. The second kind of icon that we see on the chart are called counter trend correction arrows. And this is when we use the oscillator in the traditional sense. We want to understand momentum. We, we know there's a lot of value there. So if we see an extreme swing where the oscillator goes above five, let's say in this environment, and then back below five, we want to say we are now seeing volatility cool. And so that gives us that red arrow that you see on the chart, and that indicates counter trend correction. Now, that's the likelihood uh, of a correction against the current trend. We aren't saying that we're going to see necessarily a reversal here because, of again, go trend conditions are in place and the oscillator is above zero. But we want to understand the extreme overbought and oversold levels. We want to find those situations. And so we pull those out on the chart with counter trend correction arrows. And of course, if we were in a no go, those counter trend correction arrows would be against a no go trend and they'd be green. So I'll highlight those differences when we see a security that's in a no go trend later on. Um, but that's the icons, right? To bring our eyes to back to the price chart to highlight important information. And then the final piece of the puzzle for me was to get an understanding of volatility. When I had to talk to, um, you know, could be anybody, uh, traders, an oil trader in the morning, mutual fund guys in the afternoon, bond traders, FX rates. Um, I needed a complete view of the technicals very quickly so that I could go and have, like I said, that competent conversation with them. And so volatility was the last piece that I, that I thought I needed to be able to, to go and meet with the client and say, I have a complete understanding of the technical analysis on this security. And so the way we look for volatility is for periods of reduced volatility. I think that people are scared of volatility a lot. We have choppy markets throughout um, 2023. People are worried about volatility. But what we actually want to do is embrace the beginning or the onset of volatility. We want to find periods where volatility is reduced so that we can look for that move out of that reduced volatility period. We know from the texts that after periods of reduced volatility can come periods of increased volatility, and they can be change in trends, they can be continuations if they're within trends. But we want to know when volatility is reduced so that we can look for the end of that. Um, think about a tube of toothpaste. You squeeze the tube of toothpaste, eventually the top pops off. That's what we're looking for in these reduced volatility periods. If you've done some technical work, you'll be familiar with Bollinger Bands, with Keltner Bands. You'll be familiar with the, the, the term, a Bollinger Band squeeze or a Keltner Band squeeze. And what the squeeze implies is that tightening of volatility before a break. And so we have our go, no, go squeeze indicator. And that is the climbing amber grid that you see in the lower panel. And when that grid is broken, in this case to the upside, we can expect a higher volatility move in that direction. Now, how do we come up with the go, no, go squeeze and how is it different? Well, we know now the importance of the zero line based on that discussion we just had of using momentum oscillators in trend. We know that when the oscillator is at zero, all of the inputs to our momentum indicator are in their respective neutral territories. And we look for it to find support at zero, bounce back into positive territory, you find resistance if it's a no-go. But what happens when it stays at zero, when it rides the zero line? That means that all of those momentum inputs are in their neutral territory for an extended period of time. That means there's little directional momentum. We're seeing neutral readings for an extended period of time. No excessive buying, no enthusiastic selling a tug of war, if you will, between buyers and sellers as very little happens from a price movement standpoint. Now, that could be heavy volume, lots of trading. As you can see here, there's some heavy volume during the middle of this squeeze. 
But there is no winner in terms of price volatility until that squeeze is broken. And you can see then that this leads to a trend reversal in this case. So if we put all of this together, we have an understanding of trend. We have an understanding of momentum. We have an understanding of volatility. And if we can answer these three questions, or if we can consider these three things, we'll have a complete overview of the technical analysis on energy security, right? We need to know what's happening with the trend. We need to know what's happening with the oscillator. We need to know if there's anything important happening around the zero line. Is the oscillator finding support? Is there a squeeze building? And if we can answer, if we can sort of discuss those three things, then we can get a good understanding of what's happening. So let's have a look at a couple real quick. This is the S&P chart that we showed earlier, but I updated this one this morning right before we, uh, maybe an hour before we came on. And what are we seeing? Shout it out. We're seeing that we are in a strong go. The oscillator is at one, right? Meaning positive momentum in, con in the direction of the trend. And is there anything important happening at the zero line? Yes, the oscillator is finding support at the zero line. We see a green circle, go trend continuation. We also see volume increasing on the last couple of bars. So what are we able to say about this security? It's in a strong trend. Momentum is in the direction of the trend. We're likely to see trend continuation because momentum is resurgent in the direction of the trend. Right, that's our technical view of the S&P. Uh, one of the securities that's been a big, big mover, of course, um, NVIDIA. Where are we with NVIDIA? We are in a strong go trend. The oscillator is at a value of three, meaning we're seeing positive momentum in the direction of the trend. Anything important happening at the zero line? Well, yes, we've recently found support at the zero line on heavy volume. So again, a very bullish picture, new highs, right? We can still draw our trend lines on here and see that price is broken to a new high. Um, but if we just want to say, what's the technical analysis tell us about NVIDIA? We're in a strong go trend. Momentum is positive, but not yet overbought, right? At a value of three. And we're, we've been finding support at zero and volume is heavy. So to finish off, we'll talk about some of the things that we do and some of the features that are in Metastop. We put out a couple of pieces of research every, every week. We put out a, a long form macro research piece on Mondays called Flight Path, where we take a top down approach through the macro factors that might affect equities for the week. And we, we step down through industries and subgroups until we find a couple of securities that are setting up in certain ways. Um, and then we also send out a chart pack on Saturdays that gives us a sense of that technical analysis around the asset classes. We showed you that, that one um, slide earlier where we went around the asset classes. Launch conditions is a global macro chart pack where we have 16 charts and we, we talk about the trends that we're seeing in all of those areas. And then we also put out premium research, which is every day we take we put out um, we put out some trend specific tr uh, stock ideas, just some analysis on specific stocks that are uh, showing exhibiting certain go no go criteria. Um, we're going to do a lot of work in the premium research space to build out this this, but um, at the moment you can see that we put this out every day and we talk about go no go components. So for example, this is one that went out a couple of weeks ago. Equifax seeing a new go bar, the go trend return as it tests prior highs. Um, so here's the chart of Equifax. We can look at where we are right now. Um, we can see that since that new go bar, um, we have moved higher. We've moved to new highs. Since that new go bar, we, um, we have found support at the zero line. We have seen heavy volume. And right now we're in a strong go trend with the oscillator at four keep continuing to find support at zero, giving us trend continuation icons. That's our technical analysis of Equifax. And so how do we in Metastock really take advantage of um, what we're looking at with the go, no go charts? Well, we've got two things. One is the um, expert commentary, really, really powerful because it, that one, three or four step process, what's the trend, what's momentum, um, is there anything important happening at the zero line in terms of volatility? That's all answered in Metastock using the expert commentary for any bar of any security that you're looking at. So if you're looking at a chart, click on a bar, you can see what the go-no-go -no -go charts are saying, how to interpret what you're seeing 
from a gonna go perspective? Are there any icons on the current bar? Is there a squeeze building? What's the trend? Where's the oscillator, et cetera? And then of course, one of my favorites, and um, we've updated this since, um, and go, um, Jeff's can talk a little bit about it, but we've got a whole load of explorations that allow you to scan through all of the securities in Metastock to find those go, no, go specific situations. Show me go trend continuation icons. Show me securities that are breaking out of a max go, no, go squeeze. Show me securities that are flashing new go bars. Um, all of that can be done in, in a matter of uh, seconds or minutes, and that can really, really um, reduce the time that you spend um, with with looking for opportunities in the markets. Now, there's a couple of examples. I'll roll through these because um, this is um, just a couple of live examples. Um, Marathon Oil um, was a security that I looked at a couple of days ago because it was breaking out of a max go, no go squeeze. And now we see that it has moved into a go trend. Momentum is positive. Um, like I said, broke out of that max squeeze uh, and volume is heavy. And then another one here was General Motors. This was a security that we that we actually were looking at yesterday and sent to a note out to our subscribers because of the go trend continuation icon we're seeing. So trend is a strong go. Momentum is at a value of one. And we can say that momentum has found support at zero, which triggered a go trend continuation icon. So trend likely to continue because momentum is resurgent in the direction of the go trend. So these might be securities that you look at having uh, found them using the scanning capabilities in Metastock. Uh, but hopefully uh, just this talk today has given you a sense of how we look at the complete, um, complete value that you can get from technical analysis. Technical analysis is fantastic. We all agree that that's why we're here. But can we distill it? Can we perhaps make it easier to understand for ourselves and for others? And that's why we created the Go No Go chart. So thanks so much for watching. Um, thank you, Metastock. And thank you, Jeff and everybody. And um, over to you. Thank you, Alex. Appreciate that. That was great. All right. Let me go ahead and make me the presenter. Thank you very much, Alex. I appreciate your coming in, spending some time with us. I really love the design of this. And I hope you don't mind. But I'm going to actually show it on my chart. No, <laughs> Just not show at a couple all. of examples, show some of the new scans and that kind of stuff. But before I do that, I want to say thank you for coming in, spending an hour with us, doing some bonus uh, back and forth with the new dad jokes that I wrote down. And uh, um, I appreciate it. Absolutely. You're welcome. Anytime. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Very cool. Uh, um, with that being said, I do want to kind of just show this chart that we have open of uh, this is one of the same this is the same chart of s p that alex just showed but i wanted to kind of go through the elements of it real quick and just give you an idea of how it looks on a chart so everything is clearly labeled um, with the trend identifications you get all of the um, all of the trend notice colorations i'm looking for a good word to say that but i get all the trend notifications and the trend colorations they appear on the chart automatically. You can see right here when we went into that go trend. Um, you'll see right here as we're in an uptrend, you're either going to have light bars indicating a kind of a, a weaker uptrend uh, or uh, strong blue bars that indicate a more of a stronger uptrend. Okay. Uh, these arrows that will appear, these are uh, notifications that are going to come in automatically. Um, uh, Alex calls them icons. Basically, this tells you that there might be a counter trend correction coming. Okay, so just saying we're extended in price, there may be a counter trend correction. When you see a green uh, uh, dot under the thing, if you hover over it, it says that there is a, a trend continuation pattern moving into place. And you can see that here and here and here and today. If I have any questions about kind of like what's going on in the chart, the interpretation is right here in the expert advisor. So there's a little bit of a blue bar, a triangle. It appears right here on the chart. And basically, if I just kind of read, it says, um, right now, we're in a strong grow. The trend is strong. Here's what the oscillator is doing. Here's what the green circle means. The green circle means that, the go, that this is a go trend continuation. The go trend is in place and momentum has returned in the direction of that trend, okay? Uh, it will go into a little bit more detail about everything here. I just love the commentary and the way that it works in Metastock because I can come here, I can read through this stuff and I can remind myself what's going on as it's important to the chart that we're actually looking at. 
So uh, well, uh, there you go. Another thing that I absolutely love about the Metastock version, and I think Metastock, uh, just in case you're not familiar with Metastock, it's been rated for 30 years in a row as the best software in its price category. But one of the things I think that it does very, very well is scanning. So if I open up the scanner, we just actually, based on a lot of uh, new ideas that Alex had, feedback that we have from the community and all that kind of stuff, we just updated the scanner. So um, Alex showed you three, but we actually have all of these scanners that are in here now. And uh, so um, if you wanna find stocks that are in a counter trend continuation uh, or correction, you wanna find stocks that are in different icons, uh, max squeeze, uh, new go trend, new no-go trend, all of these are different things that you can run against your exploration. So, uh, and uh, it's very, very simple to do. One of the things that Alex said that I thought was kind of interesting because I just remembered, that made me remember kind of something that John Bollinger said one time, um, and it had to do with squeeze. And so I'm gonna run the squeeze again, but he was kind of talking about kind of when things get kind of compressed. And he said, you know, squeezes, are where new trends are born. I thought that was very, very interesting. And then the opposite, when you have a high degree of volatility, that's generally where new trends end. So with that in mind, if I wanna find stocks that are squeezed or squoze, <laughs> whatever, the, whatever the terminology is correct there, if I wanna find stocks that are in a, in a, in a maximum squeeze on go, no go, the new, uh, the new M implementation makes it super easy. So right here, you see the max squeeze, if I hover over, what it's going to say is the exploration finds instruments currently experience a go no go level six squeeze, the maximum level. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and run this exploration. If you see, there's a little R there. I just ran it already, but um, you can run this against any instrument that you're interested in. Whether it's here, uh, we get a lot of traders that are in India. Uh, thank you for that. Australia, London, all of all over the place. And so regardless of the markets that you're interested in, if you're using Metastock, you can scan for whatever markets that you want. To make things easy, to make things quick, I've done the NASDAQ 100, the S&P 500, and the Dow 30. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and look at the report. It doesn't take very long to run the scan, it took a minute or something. Uh, but just to kind of keep things flowing to the end here, uh, I'll just show you the stocks that came up on that list. So out of those 630 stocks, if I just want to look at the ones uh, that are tightly squoze, <laughs> squeezed, um, it would be uh, just the list of, uh, out here, the Huntington Basker, the BF Corp, the Baker Hughes, the Corning. And I just love how easy that is because as a trader, I've, I've been using Metastock for decades now too, right? But one of the things I consistently use every single day is scanning. Uh, because if you don't have scanning, I think you miss a lot of opportunities so to otherwise see. <laughs> and uh, when it comes to the scanning that we have built into Metastock, I feel like it's one of the best scanners out there. Because if I run a scan right now, I'm going to get results right now. It's not some results that were run yesterday at like 7 p.m. after market close. It's not yesterday's results. If I'm using Metastock real time, I can scan any instrument I want, any list of instruments. I can do any time frame that I want. And it's, it's just a really, really good implementation. And one of, I think, those tools that are in Metastock that you're going to use day in and day out with GoNoGo. -Go. So uh, that's kind of a nutshell of how it works. There are system tests that you can test in GoNoGo, -Go, but I just love the way that this is designed. I love the fact that Alex has taken such an aggressive approach in terms of updating it, making it available for you. So uh, with GoNoGo, -Go, just to kind of wrap up, you get the trend, you get the oscillator, you get all those icons that tell you if there's a trend continuation or a uh, pullback might be coming in. You get the squeeze signals. All of that stuff is included. And the pricing on it, it's only $149 per month. So uh, $149 per month is what you'll pay. Uh, we do have an introductory special for that. If you're new to GoNoGo, -Go, you want to try it out. What we're going to do is we're going to give you a price of $149. And instead of doing it as a monthly price, we're gonna basically give you three months for that. That's enough time to get everything started, see how you like it, play with it, make sure you're comfortable with it. And it breaks down to about 50 bucks a month. So if it's helpful for you, you're definitely gonna to wanna to keep it. Uh, we feel, feel that 
is a great way to help you get started. So if you're new to Metastock, uh, we do have some bootcamp training that's gonna help you get going. We also include a trial to Metastock. If you need uh, to try out Metastock, there's a couple of different ways you can do that. We'll let you do it totally free for a month, or you can do also like an extended trial where you get three months of Metastock as well. So a couple of ways to kind of get in touch with us to get more information, to sign up, whatever. Metastock.com slash go, no go A. Uh, well, you can go ahead and get started right now. You can give us a call, 800 882 And you can also go to metastock.com slash sellshen. So with all that being said, um, I again, want to thank Alex. Um, also, I wanted to mention this. I almost forgot. I'm glad I remembered at the very last minute. If you own GoGoGo -Go, um, and you want to get access to the new scans, it's actually a free update. So all you have to do is log into your account on metastock.com slash my downloads and download the new product. And you'll have all of those new scans and all of the tweaks that we've done to it. If you're new to Metastock, of course, or new to Go No Go, of course, you're going to get it. Uh, this is a great offer to kind of get you started. 50 bucks a month. Uh, and it's a great product. So give it a go. Uh, call us at 800-882-3040. Uh, visit us online at metastock.com slash go no go eight or metastock.com slash sales chat. So thanks for coming, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the event. Sorry we had a few technical issues. Not a big deal, uh, but I'm glad you came. Thank you again, Alex, for being there. If you're watching this video on YouTube, like and subscribe. Right now, we're trying to get to 78,000. Actually, we're trying to get to 80,000, and I think we're at about 78. So if you do subscribe, I'd appreciate it. Uh, if you do like the video, like it. That helps us all out a great deal. We sure appreciate it. So I'll see you next time. Stay healthy. Stay well. Bye.